Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use colored leads and Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers to make a super cute kid lit illustration. So keep on watching! Hey guys, today we're doing a fairly laid back tutorial involving the Kurataki Zig Clean Color Real Brushes and a water brush. You're going to be, you're going to want to work on watercolor paper. And I've already prepared a sketch using pink and blue color Eno lead. And you guys can find out more information on using color Eno lead. Um, I have a, on this channel, I have a couple of videos about that. You're also gonna wanna grab some Kleenex or some paper towels. And we're going to be using a surface like this, a non-porous surface. This is my Ink Essentials craft mat, and I'm just looking around to see if I had any um, water spray bottles. I seem not to. So, just gonna have to proceed. The first thing I wanna do with this really cute character is I wanna go ahead and apply a wash. So, I am applying some of my Ink Essentials, I mean my clean color real brush straight to my Ink Essentials craft mat. And you can find affiliate links in the description below for all the products talked about in this video. You don't have to use specifically these, but if you're looking for something that's going to perform like what I'm using, then you might want to use those links. And those are affiliate links, so they help me out a whole lot without costing you any extra. So the first thing I'm doing is I am applying a light wash to my little Axolotl character here. And I apologize for the noise in the background. And as you guys can see, the scrubbing and the water has sort of lightened up my um, initial sketch. If I want to have that sketch as it was, I'm going to need to tighten it up after I finish this. I may have to go mute my other computer. It's a bit distracting. And I want to dab out where I cross into the blue. And while I'm using this technique with art I've drawn, you can also use this technique with your stamps. Or if you have a coloring book that features nice, healthy pages, you could also use this techniques in your coloring book as well. So we've got almost a completed, very basic wash. So we're going to clean out our brush pen and give that a chance to dry. All right, so that's had a little bit of time to dry. So I wanna switch over to another color that I'm going to use to sort of add a bit of a background, not too, too much. We're just doing sort of a cute character illustration. I'm working on my kid lit portfolio again, trying to add some variety, add some animals. So if you like my art and you like my illustration, you should definitely check out my kid lit portfolio, which will also be linked in the description below. And it's kind of just a basic character design. Since I'm throwing around the idea of doing a story about an axolotl, really a comic about an axolotl in possibly a different style than what I usually use. So we applied that Kurataki Clean Color Real Brush to the Ink Essentials Craft Mat. And if there's excess water, you wanna wipe it off before you reapply. You can also use garbage or scrap plastic, anything with sort of a glossy, shiny finish that won't absorb your water and won't trap your ink. And if you are going to be using a lot of water, you're going to want to use a bulldog clip, which is what I should have done, to hold the bottom down. And I am using a Strathmore visual journal for this. 
um, the watercolor paper, no, I'm sorry, the watercolor field paper journal. Again, I will link everything in the description below in case you want to try using what I use. And again, you using my affiliate links helps me out a lot and it doesn't actually cost you anything. Oh, and see, I goof. We'll clean that up a little bit. It actually doesn't look bad. I could actually use the shade of blue to shade her skin and that would actually look very cute. So I'm going to let this dry and go grab a bulldog clip. All right, so this has had an opportunity to dry. I'm going to go ahead and go back in with this blue and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can better see what I'm doing now that I've sort of demonstrated the side palette technique. And it's one I use quite frequently when I'm using watercolor markers. It helps a lot. And I'm just going to darken up some of that shadow, not too, too much. And we do this to sort of place our character on the page so that they don't look like they're just floating. Think of it as a cheaper way to do backgrounds certainly not appropriate for every example but definitely fairly useful in character design. I'm gonna go ahead and darken where the tail would be as well and then I'm going to go ahead and clean that off the table and clean out my brush And I'm going to start darkening some of the wash effect. So we'll start with the tail. And if you get too much water on your brush, you can just dab it off on a paper towel or a Kleenex, whatever you have handy. I've even used my jeans, but don't tell. I apologize, I seem to be a little bit off camera. And some of this watercolor, or rather uh, clean color real brush ink dried on the mat, which is fine. Very easy to reactivate, just some clean water. All right. And again, we're gonna step away and let that dry. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna clean that up off of my essentials craft mat and scoot on over so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So I am going to go in and add just a few details here and there using the actual clean color real brush. And I'll zoom in for y'all so you can see and I'll remove that, at least for now, it is kind of in the way. Oh, sorry about that. Carefully draw in the little webbings in between her fingers. And you see how much darker the color is when you're applying it directly versus when you diluted it. That's why when I'm using these markers, I'm a really big fan of using them on watercolor papers. And I'm a really big fan of using something as sort of a palette in between. Helps me build up a lot of color without needing to use a lot of markers. Knowing these sort of tips and techniques can really help you stretch the supplies you have and save some money while you're building up a collection. Wet in the wet for some smooth blends. Want to be careful because you're going to get something called, well, 
I call a blow back where the water, there's more water on the page than there is um, wet water, whatever, in liquid in your brush tip. So your brush tip will absorb some of the water and it'll affect the color for a while. And you can fix that. It's not a permanent situation, but you know, it does impede your ability to make art. even if only for a moment. And we also want to darken up this area here. Go ahead and flip it for easy access. And fill in her gills over on the other side. Now, a problem with water brushes is that even if you're not squeezing them, they can sometimes deposit more water on the surface that you're using as your palette, diluting your colors. So it's, you may want to wipe them off first before you pick up your color on a paper towel or a napkin or a Kleenex or whatever you're using just to get some of that excess water out. And I'm just lightly building up areas of color. I wish my Discord would chill since I'm busy right now. All right. So wipe that off and give this a chance to dry. All right, that's had a chance to dry. I do want to do one more wash layer, and that is on her tail. And darken the layers of overlap up. Just building up a little more contrast here. Wipe that up. And again, you need to step away and let that dry. Okay, now that this has had a chance to dry, we're going to go in and begin working directly from the brush. You can blend it out to an extent. But if you want really soft blends and delicate color buildup, you don't really want to rely on um, your ability to blend it out like this alone. So that is something I'm going to blend out because I don't like how that turned out. And my water brush is putting down a little too much water. I do like how those turned out, but I want everything to look consistent. So I'm going to blend them out, and then after it has a chance to dry, I'm going to redo it. So blending it out doesn't completely get rid of it. But it does help hide some of the mistakes. It gives you a chance to redo it if you need to. And her webs are a little dark for my taste, so I'm just lightening them up a bit. Let that diffuse a little bit. Now, unfortunately, on her webbing, it's actually starting to bleed. So, I'm just going to dab some of that excess water up. That's a little bit better. And let that dry. All right, so we're going to go back in and redraw those scallops. And for now, I'm just sort of noodling around. Fiddling until things look the way I want. 
but I do know that I need to clean my brush and underneath I'm going to draw directly with this really light blue and then so I got all the pink out blend it out a little bit so that keep developing that shadow and I'm going to do what? Of course, let that dry. All right, so I'm going to go back in and tighten those a little bit. And that just basically means going over those areas and redrawing some of those lines. Okay. Oh, and then I'm going to use this almost like I would a, um, like if I were inking, so like a brush pen. Which it is a type of brush pen, I'm just using it to tighten up some of my lines. And then I'm switching over to a darker color, darker shade of pink, but only for a few areas. And then finally, for this blue that has been on the table the whole time, and it doesn't quite apply too, as smoothly as you would hope on watercolor paper. There's a couple of things we can do if you want to smooth that out. So, one, make sure your water brush tip is clean. And then just sort of gently go over it. And you're going to end up picking up a lot of this blue and sort of just redistributing it. You can dab it off onto your paper towel if that helps. And now we have a little bit more even distribution. So I'm going to let that dry. All right, so the blue has dried. We can either do a little bit of shading with another layer of blue, which is the nice thing about using the water to sort of spread out and lift is that you can get another layer in there. up a little bit. All right, looking really, really cute. So I'm going to grab a waterproof brush pen, if I can find one. The, let me zoom out, Sakura Pigma FB will work just dandy. And I'm also going to want to add white details, so some Copic Opaque White. And 
And I will super duper zoom in so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And the Sakura Pigma FB is like a teeny tiny food aid pen. So it's really good for very, very fine line work. Sorry, it's hard for me to talk in ink, hard for me to pull those lines. And it's water and alcohol marker proof. And I'm just trying to have a really light hand. All right, almost done. I'm going to grab a small synthetic brush. And I like using a synthetic because it can kind of hold up to the Copic Opaque White and a cup of water. All right, I've got that cup of water. And my Copic Opaque White. And mine is kind of dried out, so I basically use it like wash where I add some water as I go, rather than trying to rehydrate it, but it still works just fine. And I'm gonna do a little Paisley, so she's a little axolotl. If she were wearing clothing, it would probably be the same rationale as I use for Kara. It would probably be found things. And while I don't like using Strathmore watercolor paper for watercolor watercolors, I actually really do like using it for illustrations. And I think it would probably be a good paper for gouache as well, just for how it handles the Copic Opaque White. And it's a good paper, in my opinion, for the Clean Color Real brush markers as well. Because it's just sturdy enough. And it's not overly expensive either, so. This is sort of a good book to doodle and do illustrations in. Now to add a few white highlights just here and there. So I definitely want to add them on her eyes. And on her lip. And at the tops of her gills. on her knees and I think also on her cheeks She's looking really, really cute. And we really didn't need a lot of colors. There weren't a lot of materials involved in this either. So you can really do a lot if you know how to use your materials and if you use your materials strategically. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on using the Kuretake Zig Clean Color Real Brush. 
I hope you guys will try this out at home yourselves. It's not a difficult technique. It does require a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice in the right paper. So I do recommend Strathmore Watercolor Visual Journals for this. It's a great way to practice this sort of stuff and keep them all in one place. And I hope you guys will check out some of my other videos here on my channel. I do art tutorials twice a week and I am always coming up with hopefully something new, something a little bit different. And I hope you guys enjoy them. If there's ever anything you guys want to see me try out let me know in the comments or head on over to my patreon i have a tier just for that so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you have a great day and i hope to see you again really soon bye guys